Again, that letter coming from the Department of Education calling on public schools to allow transgender students to use bathrooms that match their gender identity. Schools that fail to follow the guidelines risk losing federal funds for education. So joining us now to talk about this new battlefront in the culture war, Republican State Senator Patrick Colbeck of Canton, Julius Austin of the Change Agent Consortium, and Michelle Fox Phillips, Executive Director of the Gender Identity Network Alliance. We thank you so much for coming in this evening to discuss this important topic. Thank you. We're going to start you, with you, Brian. Senator Colbeck. Yeah, it's amazing right now. I, at a time when we got 50% of our third graders who can't read, we've got 72% of our 11th graders who don't know their math. I got 32,000 job openings in the 7th District. And yet we got the federal government going off and telling us that the most important issue that we need to address here is bathrooms and uh, whether or not we should allow men to go into girls' locker rooms and girls' bathrooms. And I, I think uh, our priorities are upside down. I think we need to focus in on the basics of uh, teaching kids how to uh, read, how to, how, to, how to do math, how to do science, how to do, and, and learning more about our country and the way we're supposed to operate in our social study standards. Michelle, let's get you in on this. Conservative lawmakers are calling these guidelines a distraction from core education and blatant social engineering, but voices on the left saying public schools that ignore the policies are promoting discrimination against transgender individuals. So does the senator's position violate students' rights, in your opinion? Yes, they do. Students should have every right to use the bathroom or the restroom that they identify with. It's very important. The suicide rates among teens before the age of 20 is 50 percent and people need the kids need to identify they need this very much it's very important to them a lot of kids because they cannot use the restroom of their choice and they are segregated they have to wait until they get home to use the bathroom and it's like eight hours well, obviously, there are conflicting points of view on this issue. The guidelines raising many questions, leaving some institutions confused over what they should do. Earlier this week, the federal government and North Carolina sued each other over that state's transgender public bathroom law. So now Texas appears ready to join that fight. Yes, yes, they are. But there was also, I think it was South Carolina, where the fourth uh, district of appeals have ruled in favor of a transgender young man, young man that he was able to use the restroom of his choice that he identifies with. And because of that, that's going to nullify the North Carolina bill. So Julius, what, what's your take on this? I mean, should people be forced to use bathrooms that correspond to the sex on their birth certificates? What do you think? We at the Change Agent Consortium believe that all Americans, whether they be children or adults, deserve equal protection under the law. Yep. That's the bottom line. Senator, I want, I'd like to bring you back in. Tell us what exactly you think should be done here. I mean, should there not be some sort of happy medium, a separate bathroom, or you think absolutely not they need to stay in the bathroom of birth? Well, first of all, we need to pay attention to what the law really says and what it doesn't say. In the Title IX, I've read it. Um, it talks about sex. It's not gender identity. So when we're talking about the uh, edict that's been issued by the president as administration, we need to keep that in context. So in regards to overall solutions on it, you know, we've got faculty bathrooms. If you want to use a unisex bathroom, go to the faculty bathroom. Overall, though, the bigger picture issue is um, we have lost our, our appreciation of what the role of the judiciary is, what the role of the legislative branch is, and what the executive branch. And this is an executive overreach. The, by the uh, judiciary um, uh, attempting to go off and write the law, as they're trying to do out in South Carolina, where they talked about that. That's an issue as well. Um, according to the Constitution, all legislative power is, in the le is associated with the Congress, and we had to start playing our positions for our country to get back on the right track. So you're saying you just don't feel it's a top priority issue. Am I correct in that, sir? Um, well, in regards to education, yeah, I'd like to worry about the other 99% of the students and making sure that they have an opportunity to thrive and, uh, and be successful in society. That's my focus. Yeah, but what about the other, the transgender children? Using a separate restroom, okay, stigmatizes them and it outs them. All they want to do is be a student and all they want to do is learn. 
Sex is also defined by Title IX as gender identity. Well, it's not. That's not what it says. It doesn't have to. The, so, Julius, can you weigh in on this? Yeah, I was going to say, the, the bottom line here, though, and I don't want to get too lost in it, is that everybody deserves equal rights. Everybody deserves equal protection. And when you get away from that, I think then you get away from what America really stands for. All right, thank you everybody for joining us. I know this is an issue that's, that's not gonna go away anytime soon. There's gonna be a, a lot of debate, a lot of legal challenges probably coming. So thank you all so much for joining us tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, an emotionally charged one too.